What I would like to share here, something that we've shared in passing, I would like to focus in on and articulate this point. And that is, if we look at the natural world, the natural world is always moving. There's a rhythm, there's newness, there's freshness. Whether we like it or not, it's happening. Within the human being, just place your fingers on your pulse and you will experience this movement of time, this rhythm and beat of time. Really, it's the only human being that, if not conscious, becomes still and static in an unhealthy way. There's no such thing as the lack of movement. Time, by default, is constantly ticking along, whether we like it or not. And the question is, how do we relate to that? How do we react to that? What happens for so many people <coughs> is that in relationship, it's so easy for things to become still and static, and for sure stale. And it saddens the experience in a tremendous way. We end up missing out, we end up losing out. And the pain and the hurt that we end up experiencing, it's really, it's deep, it's very real. However, the reality is, is that when a person has isolated, a person has frozen any relationship, it's not actually the relationship that hurts us. It's the fact that we froze relationship. That's what hurts us. It's the fact that we forgot that in this world, there's always movement. There's always a rhythm. There's always a beat. And when we forget that the nature of life in this lower level of consciousness, it hurts. That's what hurts. It hurts. Sometimes you can hear people say that they would rather have an argument than a person not argue and just be still. It's important to realize this, that in all our relationships, especially the relationships of husband and wife, and children, the person you married from month to month is changing. In most ways, subtly, sometimes dramatically. But the person you married 10 years ago is not the person you are with today. We're always growing. And so many times I hear from people, when I married you, you weren't like this. Well, yes, of course, because we grow, we change, of course. And what happens is we lock ourselves into a certain paradigm. We lock ourselves into a certain way of life. And if that locking does not allow room for movement, for change, then all we hurt is ourselves. And unfortunately, sometimes the closest people around us. And this is why we have to articulate, make really conscious the reality of change. There's a couple I know, they're in their 60s. And they have been in various chaburs for years. And they have unbelievable shalom bayis. And it's interesting because I was observing them and I was asking them, what's this key? Like, well, what is it? And they said, I don't know. And I suggested, I mean, two things. What I've noticed about you is that you really listen to each other. And you give space, as we've mentioned before, to individuality. You give space for each party to have their own experiences. You give space to grow. And you give space for exploration of self. So you give space to grow, but you listen. You listen so intensely. You listen and you don't take for granted. And it's so important to remember, just to realize we're always changing. If somebody reacts and acts differently in a situation, Whereas some time ago, it would have been a different reaction. Sometimes better, sometimes for worse. 
It's natural. There's always waves. There's always change occurring. Either we're locked in and we think when we're in our 70s and 80s, when we're in our 90s, we're still married to the same person as they were when they were 20. Come on. It's not real. When we're 120 years old, we're married to a different person as was so many years beforehand. Remember the nature of change. Remember, as we have mentioned, gratitude. Being nice to be nice. Work on it. Be conscious. Remember the human being. We, we work a certain way. Become more aware of that. Giving space and time in a relationship. Remember, the more you grow, the more you have growth in your relationship, the more you own what's going on, you give room for the other. As we've said, remember to share your beliefs and your values. Remember the idea of love that we spoke about. Own your relationship. Own it. Don't let it be haphazard. Remember always to have hope and resilience. Praise God, Hashem, I bless us all that we all can have a house of love and laughter and fun, an inviting house that we can notice the other person and we can be, a, be of service to them the way they want. Praise God, Hashem, constantly growing.